Today I'm going to show you guys my Bleeding Hinterclaw build 2.0 and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome back to another video. So today I will be going over my Bleeding Hinterclaw build 2.0. Now, if you guys haven't seen the 1.0 version, I will put it in an annotation at the top right of the screen right now. That way you guys can go ahead and check that out. So this week we will be going over 2.0. Now, I do have a lot of builds that I do want to go ahead and try, and we will see how we can actually go about that. But for this build or this video specifically, it will be the Hinterclaw 2.0 for the bleeding build. So let's go ahead and get into everything right now. So, as you guys know, for the Valor Plate, we will be using the Hinterclaw. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the attributes first. For Might, we have 2775. For Spirit, we have 2417. For Vitality, this is 2082. Primary DPS is 821. Secondary DPS is 821. Max HP is 3425. Now for the Combat, the Critical Hit Chance is 29%. The Critical Hit uh, Bonus Damage is 203%. And then the weak point bonus damage is 234%. Now for the ailment chance, we have a 33% chance to bleed, a 20% chance to ignite, a 20% chance to chill, shock, poison, and curse. However, I never am able to proc any of those except for bleed. And I don't know why, but it just doesn't happen. So let's go ahead and go into the weapons. Now, we have the Sword of Courage. My Sword of Courage uh, has 544 uh, physical DPS. The primary on this reads, whenever you inflict bleed, shoot up to two projectiles that each deal 3124 physical damage to an enemy. As for the secondary, we have plus 27% damage to bleeding enemies, plus 21% weak damage, oh, I'm sorry, weak point damage, plus 13% chance to inflict bleed, and then plus 6% chance to inflict ailments. Now that's where we get all the extra 20% for everything else because everything else is technically considered ailments. Uh, next, we have the Wanderer's Ambition. This is a legendary uh, dual blade, or at least I upgraded it to a legendary dual blade or enchanted it. Uh, this also has 544, but this is fire DPS. Now the primary on this is while inner focus is active, you deal plus 40% damage and enemies deal plus 25% damage to you. Now, that might see like a bad thing, but it really isn't. And I'll show you guys why uh, later on in the video. As for the secondary, we have plus 15% uh, rampage charge speed, plus 40% weak point damage, plus 22% critical hit damage, and then plus 5% critical hit chance. As for our amulet, we are using the Market of Duelist. This has 270 spirit. Primary uh, stat on this reads, restore 93 health whenever you perform a critical hit. Secondary stats is plus 15% physical damage. And if you guys do know, physical damage does help create bleed. So yeah, it definitely helps. Uh, then we have plus 8% uh, Archon Fury duration, plus 10% critical hit chance and then plus 23% critical hit damage. Next for the charm, we use the Ash Meteorite. This has 270 uh, might. Then for the primary, we have whenever you hit a weak point, shoot a projectile that deals 3379 physical damage. Now, once again, physical damage leads to bleed. Then for the secondary, we have plus 21% weapon technique damage, plus 24% weak point damage, plus 30 physical damage, and then plus 6% chance to inflict ailments. As for the ring, or one of the rings, we use the Dawn Lord Signet. And this is a legendary ring. It gives me uh, 270 uh, spirit. And this is very important. And I'll, I'll tell you why. The primary stat reads, whenever you defeat an enemy with a takedown, the enemy explodes and deals 26, 23 physical damage to nearby enemies. This explosion has a plus 50% chance to inflict bleed. Now, this is important for several reasons. When you are doing your northern technique, it tends to knock down the enemies, which once you rush to them, it'll lead to a takedown. And 
half chance to actually inflict bleed on doing that, yes, I will take that all day. Next, for the secondary, we have plus 28% physical damage, once again, eventually uh, leads to bleed, plus 8% Archon Fury charge speed, plus 27% uh, damage to bleeding enemies times two. Next, we have the Zwee's Embrace, or I hope I'm saying that correctly. This gives me 270 uh, vitality. Primary on this is whenever you hit a weak point, gain 208 overhealth, and your overhealth no longer degenerates. This ring is huge, extremely important, especially when you are doing the tower solo. I say this again, when you are doing the tower solo, this ring helps you out so much. And the thing is, my build has changed a lot since uh, the 1.0 version, and I did incorporate weak point a lot more, and I'll show you guys why later on. So next, we have the um, Archon's Tear for the Legendary Lifestone. This gives me 1362 uh, health recovery. Primary effect on this last 10 seconds, which I gain plus 35% critical hit chance, plus 145% critical hit damage. Secondary effects on this also last 10%. I have plus 11% soul shatter buildup, plus 23% long sword damage, plus 23% and plus 24% critical hit damage. And then last but not least, we have your banner, Standard of the Golden Lion. This is probably the only banner you want in the game unless you're playing a support role. This gives me 44 uh, overhealth. And primary on this is while I'm in the uh, banner aura, I gain plus 32% weapon technique charge speed, shield charge speed, and Archon Fury charge speed. Also within the aura, uh, secondary stats, I gain plus 20% breach damage, which I really don't care about much, but I do care about the plus 49% weak point damage, plus 6% chance to inflict bleed, and then plus 6% uh, percent critical hit chance. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and go straight to the augments because this build will not be complete without them. So, let's go ahead and start with the MVP of my augments, the surety, or the surety, however you want to pronounce it. This is a extremely OP, yes, overpowered augment and if you guys want an easier chance to actually know how to get the surety i will put it in an annotation at the top right of the screen right now and that will be your guide on how to get this augment easier once again to get it easier so this gives me plus oh i'm sorry this gives me 30 drain 203 might primary stat on this is Whenever you hit an enemy with your northern technique, expose the enemy's weak points and deal plus 112% weak point damage the next time you hit a weak point. That is huge. This augment opens up the world to insane amounts of damage that you can do to bosses, adds, uh, mini bosses, etc. When you are fighting a boss and you have this augment on, you will melt bosses like it is cool. And I cannot stress the fact that if you have this augment, use it. Even if it's a bad one, use this augment. And if you don't know if you have it, I would go into your augments right now and check and put it on. Because this augment is once again overpowered. Use it and use it well, my friends. Unfortunately, the secondary stats on mine aren't so good. This gives me plus 40% primary, oh sorry, polarity attack damage, plus 10% great sword damage, which doesn't really matter because I don't use great swords, and then plus 9% soul shatter buildup, and plus 20% weapon technique damage. Once again, I am using this for the might, the drain, and the primary. And I guess a little bit of the plus 20% uh, weapon technique damage. Next, for the next Might Augment, we have the Twilight Bloom. 
This gives me 15 Drain, 179 Might. And then for the primary, we have plus 91% uh, weapon technique damage if at least two adjacent augments are red. And that has to be two augments that you have on it. As you can tell, going to the right is the surety. And then the, I guess, uh, <laughs> north, south, east, west. The north, I'm sorry, this southeast is a different augment that is also might. Now, for the secondary, we have plus 60% damage to bleeding enemies, plus 20% weak point damage, and then plus 14% physical damage. Next augment is the evisceration. This gives me 15 might, I'm sorry, 15 drain, 179 might. And then the primary stat on this is gain the blessing of power whenever you perform a critical hit. Ladies and gentlemen, this build is a Hinterclaw build. You will be critical hitting a lot. So you will be proccing the uh, blessing of power as much as possible. What the blessing of power does, it, it increases your physical damage um, whenever you hit an enemy. So the you're pretty much your might goes higher. Uh, for the secondary stats, we have plus 44% weak point damage. Yes. And then plus 14% Rampage bonus damage, that's 21% uh, weapon technique damage, and all three of those are perfect on this build together. Next, we have the Wolf's Fury uh, augment, and this is a rare augment. Now, this gives me five drain, 165 uh, vitality. Primary on this is whenever you parry an enemy, gain 243 over health. Now, this actually helps with the Zwee's Embrace ring that I mentioned earlier. Secondary stat on this is plus 29% physical damage and then plus 88 uh, might. Next, we also have another rare augment, which is the Lion's Pride. Once again, five drain, 165 fatality. And then uh, for the primary, it, I'm sorry, for the primary, you gain 72 over health whenever you defeat an enemy. So you're constantly getting that overhelp, whether it be the Zwee's Embrace, the Lion's Pride, or um, the Wolf's Fury. Like, once again, this helps a lot when you are soloing the tower by yourself. Secondary stat on this is plus 59% damage to bleeding enemies, and then plus 81 might. Coming up to the top, we have the uh, Entropy, which this gives me 15 drain, and 179 spirit. Primary on this is whenever you activate Archon Fury, shoot up to three uh, projectiles that each deal 10,501 physical damage to an enemy. This does have a chance, because it does physical damage, to inflict bleed. Secondary stat on this is plus 52% damage to bleeding enemies plus 20% shield damage, and then plus 98 might. And then for the very last augment we have is the Sleepless Eye. This gives me five drain, 165 spirit, and then for the primary on this, if each consecutive enemy hit with your shield throw takes an additional 55% damage. Now, if you guys don't know shield throw, it can knock down adds. And if you knock down adds, you'll be able to do a takedown. If you do a takedown, you will be able to actually make bleed happen um, half the time. So, this build works together pretty well. As for the secondary stat, we have plus 27% uh, physical damage and then plus 89 might. Now, the next thing I wanna go over with you guys is the skills. And I will say they have not changed since the last time that I've actually done this. So for the weapon techniques, we have uh, five levels in that. Soul Shatter, we have five levels in that. Vitality, we have five. Shield Attacks, I actually did not put anything into this still. Um, just because I would rather throw the shield than get closer to an enemy with the shield attacks versus the Northern Technique, which I like a lot better to get closer to enemies. For the Shield Throw, there is only one uh, level in that, none in banners, none in shield prime, five in critical hit chance, none in sundering slam, only one 
in weapon timing, all five in might, all five in critical hit damage, all five in uh, Archon Fury, only four in resistance, all five in spirit, all five in weak points, none in recovery. Then we have five in ailments. Once again, this will help you uh, proc bleed more often. None in siphon, five in rampage, only one in polarity attacks, none in breach, none in, I'm sorry, all five in all stats, one in takedowns, and then one in finesse. If you learn anything from me, let it be this. When you are starting this game or you're actually redoing your skill points, always at least put one, just level one at least, at the minimum, in finesse. This will help you evade so much easier than not having any because this thing is actually important for survivability. So I would highly suggest you like use it. <laughs> so that is the build and you guys can go ahead and use this build or at least attempt to use this build inside the tower um, on your own. I like doing it. I've gotten all the way um, with myself and with others um, to level 50 and above. This is a beautiful um, build so far. However, it is not 100% complete. And I say that because I feel that this build can be better in many ways. And for example, let's go ahead and start with one of the ways. Let's go to the armory. Let's, uh, whoops. Rarity. I am looking for, I am looking for a sword of dominance that has a sword of courage role. Now, once again, sword of courage. Whenever you inflict bleed, shoot up to two projectiles that each deal whatever amount of physical damage to an enemy. Sword of Dominance can be found inside of the tower. And it's a total random drop. Now, the reason why I want this sword over the Sword of Courage is because this can roll with two, not one, but two primary stats. So I can have a Sword of Courage roll with a uh, Draspool's Legacy roll at the same time. That would be amazing. Amazing. <laughs> like that that would make my day 100%. That plus a little bit of tweaks to the builds um, will actually make it better as well. One thing I forgot to go over when it comes to augments is that all of my augments are fully maxed out for um, their rank. So as you can see, on my sleepless eye at the very top left, it shows all five, uh, I guess, octagons, hexagons, hexagons. <laughs> no, I don't remember. <laughs> all five of them are um, completely full, so it's 100% upgraded to its uh, max potential. So definitely go ahead and do that. And as you can see at the bottom where it says augment power usage, I am 90 of 100. So I have a little bit of room to play with uh, when I want to go ahead and change this. So, I am letting you guys know right now that there will be a Bleeding Hinterclaw build 3.0 whenever I get that sort of dominance and I mess with the augments a little bit more to get whatever it is that I want. Um, I guess for the rest of the augments. And I will say this though. I was never a fan of dual blades until now that I have Shirty. The Wanderer's Ambition is amazing with Shirty, and if you guys do not have this, go ahead and get it. It drops as an epic, and you can go ahead and upgrade it to a legendary. So, with that said, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this build, and if there was anything you would actually change in the build to actually make it better besides, you know, <laughs> getting the sort of dominance. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.